Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. We're here today on episode 2245 of the Cabral Concept. Thanks so much for joining me here today. Excited to get into today's show, and that is because we're going to be talking about PCOS and an actual nutrient that has been shown to outperform any other pharmaceutical drug right now used for PCOS. I also want to explain really what PCOS is, the root cause of it, and then be able to share true scientific research as to how you can improve your overall symptoms and actually get to a point where PCOS for you no longer exists. So one of the reasons why this is so important is that one out of 10 women experience PCOS-based symptoms. So when we're talking about polycystic ovary syndrome, so that's what PCOS stands for, what we're talking about is honestly, yes, there can be cystic-based issues, there's no doubt about that, but there's also typically a set of symptoms. And those symptoms are low mood, anxiety, depression in terms of the actual mood and mind. Then we have low energy, brain fog, overall lethargy, so not a lot of drive and ambition. Then we have some irritability, which has to do with the testosterone. We'll talk about that in a moment. We'll talk about higher uh, levels of weight gain or basically water retention or puffiness and sometimes facial hair growth and acne. So those are a lot of the symptoms that women may be feeling in terms of overall mind and body, but then it's oftentimes coupled with a cessation of their actual menstrual cycle. So they are stop their menstrual cycle. It can then, of course, cause infertility and other issues. So in our our practice, and of course, that's what we're sharing with you, we, we share with the entire world, what we do is we actually look for, well, well, what are the underlying root causes? Because in conventional medicine, they don't really give you an answer, right? They're just saying, well, you know, we're just going to put you on something to help better regulate your blood sugar, and we're probably going to put you on birth control that may help with your um, non regulated cycle or some of the symptoms that you're having. But the problem is that overlooks why it was caused in the first place. So even if you have a genetic predisposition to PCOS, because maybe your mom or sibling or aunts or whoever had it, we, we want to understand that that doesn't mean that that has to happen to you. It means that your genetics were influenced through proteins or single nucleotide polymorphisms that were turned on from the environment. Now, again, this is not necessarily any fault of your own. But what it means is that certain foods or stressors or toxins, et cetera, can actually set off your genes to then cause PCOS-based symptoms. And of course, we've had thousands of women in our practice with PCOS. And I'm going to share with you exactly how do we get to the bottom of it. And then also, again, using nutritional biochemistry and nutritional science to use the best of what's out there right now. So what I want to do is just share with you first uh, what the actual underlying root causes of PCOS are. So like, why do you have PCOS in the first place? This is important because if you never peel back the onion and you never know why, all you're really doing is treating the symptoms. So you can either treat the symptoms with drugs or you can treat the symptoms with supplements. I don't recommend you do either of them. So I recommend you find the root cause Right, And then you can then use nutritional supplements or if you choose pharmaceutical drugs while you're rebalancing. And I'm good with that because then you know what you're truly working on and at the same time alleviate a lot of your symptoms. Okay, so let's get into it. Main reasons for PCOS, main root cause reasons. The main reasons are higher levels of cortisol. What does that mean? Well, it means that you're suffering from higher levels of stress. I mean, that's literally the bottom line, right? So you are stressed from either gut-based issues, okay? Stealth pathogens, like we've talked about before. I'll link up a podcast on stealth pathogens today. So all the research, by the way, because everything is scientifically validated, will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2245. If you want to head over there now, I'll give you the main takeaways and the uh, links as well. stephencabral.com forward slash 2245. So we have to understand that uh, heavy metals, mold, 
uh, injuries, any of those inflammatory things can cause stress in the body. Uh, viral load can cause stress in the body. Work, life, relationships can cause stress in the body. So stressors can increase your stress hormone cortisol. Well, when that happens, you can also then be dealing with lower thyroid. Lower thyroid can mimic a lot of the same symptoms as PCOS. And sometimes the two Honestly, they just go hand in hand. So you really want to be able to work on and assess those two. The next one is high testosterone. So many women with PCOS are dealing with higher levels of testosterone, but higher levels of testosterone are usually not a root cause. Some women, uh, mesomorph body type or pitta body type women, do trend towards higher levels of testosterone. There's no doubt about that, but that doesn't mean it's too high that it would cause PCOS-based symptoms. So why the high levels of testosterone? Well, the higher levels of stress can lead to higher levels of testosterone or the next point, number four, is a blood sugar imbalance. Higher levels of morning glucose or higher levels of what's called the cortisol awakening response can cause higher levels of blood sugar, which can then cause higher levels of testosterone. So remember, just again, there's always an underlying root cause. There's always an answer. Things are linked. Your body does not work in separate pieces, right? This body right here, it all works together. I know that it might seem confusing at times and, and it can get complex, but there is always an answer and the goal is to always simplify. So remember, there is honestly usually six to maybe 12 reasons maximum why anyone suffers from anything. All our job to, is to do is to whittle that down to the one, two, or three things that you suffer from, right? And then we don't have to rebalance 12 things. We only have to rebalance one, two, or three things. That's always the goal, all right? So we've got higher levels of stress hormones like cortisol, lower levels of thyroid, higher levels of testosterone, Okay, higher levels of blood sugar, so blood sugar imbalance. We can test that with fasting glucose levels. And then we can also have higher levels of estrogen. Now, why would you have higher levels of estrogen leading to estrogen dominance, which, by the way, mimics a lot of the same symptoms, such as brain fog, weight gain, water retention, um, ac adult acne, lower mood, digestive issues, and so much more. And also uh, menstrual cycle dysregularity. So again, that's why we want to know, is this PCOS or is this estrogen dominance? But again, we're really just talking about symptoms. Unless there's specific cysts, which you can have diagnosed, uh, you might be dealing with the overall symptoms of PCOS. And that's okay too, because it's honestly, you still look for the same underlying root causes. So estrogen dominance is very, very uh, it's, it's at a very high rate in our practice. About eight out of 10 women we see with these types of symptoms have some level of estrogen dominance. That's typically, oftentimes, to, to be honest with you, it's lower levels of progesterone and normal levels of estrogen that cause the estrogen dominance. Because you don't have to have a high estrogen to have estrogen dominance. You just have to have a greater ratio, a higher ratio of estrogen to progesterone. And the higher it is, the more symptoms you're going to feel, even like night sweats, uh, oftentimes during the second half of your cycle. So this, these, again, there's always an answer. Um, it's not as complex as you think. We can narrow this down because we have one more to go and that's toxicity. So the last reason we typically see for PCOS, there are others, but these are the main ones we see, is toxicity. And why would toxicity be an issue? Okay, the more toxins you have, the more body fat you begin to gain, or the more water retention, the more puffiness, the greater amount of adipose tissue swelling. This is because your body, if it can't detox it, doesn't keep it in your bloodstream, it will move it to the brain tissue, which is fat, 90%, and then, or it moves it to your body fat. The body fat begins to swell. That's why you look a little maybe puffier. And that is where this, you store a lot of the toxins. Okay. So that's one. But what happens when you increase body fat? Well, when you increase body fat, you increase endogenous production of estrogen. So now you have greater amounts of estrogen in your body. Not ideal. It's not just, it's not a positive. You want balanced, healthy levels of estrogen. Okay. So what happens there? Well, higher levels of Estrogen leads to what? More of the same symptoms of PCOS and greater weight gain. So now that leads to what? Well, higher levels of cortisol and estrogen, and then we're back in the same cycle. So you can see how it's a vicious cycle. And so then you say, well, I'm going to go on a weight loss uh, 
plan or whatever it might be, but you lose the weight. And what happens? Well, when you empty these adipose, you basically oxidize them, you break down this adipose tissue, out comes some of the toxins. Now the toxins in your bloodstream. Well, what happens if your liver, right? If your liver is not ready to detox those toxins to the greatest capacity that it can, remember, it's going to detox some, what does it do? Well, it moves it back to safe storage place, which is body fat, brain, etc. So I want to look at this as a holistic plan because you're not going to be able to figure it out just by looking at one thing, which brings me to uh, what do we do to look for the underlying root causes? And then we'll get to the one thing that most people are doing right now. But in my opinion, it's a great adjunct, but not the end all be all. But I still want to give you that, right? Because I want to stay as an unbiased source for you. So the number one thing you can do is run a lab that's literally built for your hormones and PCOS. And that's the stress, mood and metabolism test. Now, you can find that test at stephencabral.com forward slash labs or directly to it at Stephen brawl.com forward slash hormones dash test. Now, keep in mind, you don't need to run that with our practice. Not at all. You can ask your naturopathic doctor to run it with you. You could also ask your integrative health practitioner level two to run it with you. That's your choice. You don't have to run it with our practice, but I want you to know that that is the number one test to look at everything we just spoke about except for toxicity. So it will not tell you about toxicity, okay? I do recommend the big five labs, especially if you have digestive issues, and, and it will look at your omega-3s and food sensitivities, which create more inflammation in the body, right? People say inflammation is a root cause of PCOS. That's not true. Inflammation is part of PCOS, but inflammation has a root cause itself. So I don't want to disagree with inflammation. It's there, and that's why omega-3s can help as well, but that's not the end-all, be-all, all right? So if you can do the big five, do the big five. Um, if you can only do one lab, it's the stress, mood, and metabolism, okay? It's going to test estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, testosterone, cortisol throughout the day. So four times. It's going to test your free T4, free T3, TSH, TPO antibodies. It's going to test your vitamin D, your insulin, and your hemoglobin A1C, I'm pretty sure, at this point. All right? So that's, that's what you want to look at. Again, you can run it with whoever you feel comfortable with, but that's how you get to the underlying root causes. Now, the second part is, well... What do we want to do if there's high cortisol? Well, if there's high cortisol, we're going to use things like magnesium and adrenal soothe, okay? Well, what if there's something like high testosterone? Okay, we can use a testo quench based product. What if there's high levels of estrogen or estrogen dominance? We can use a product called estrogen balance. So remember, there's always going to be a way to help balance that in the short term while we are rebalancing the overall lifestyle factors that take some time. And I'm going to share the studies with you right now. But there's one product that keeps getting brought up over and over and over, for PCOS, and that is inositol. So inositol is an amazing nutrient. It's actually a B vitamin. Most people don't know that it's a B vitamin, and that is because it's no longer called B8, right? But it used to be vitamin B8. Just like when we look at folate or folic acid, B9, a lot of people are like, well, I didn't know that that was a B vitamin. They're B vitamins, right? So inositol is a great B vitamin. And one of the reasons why we know then, okay, when we think B vitamins, what do we do? We think about helping with overall stress. That's true. That's what your B vitamin family does. It's anti-stress. But every B vitamin essentially helps the liver, but it also helps utilize energy from food. That's one of the main roles of most B vitamins. It literally takes your carbohydrates, nutrients in general, but a lot of it carbohydrates, and it uses those carbs and it uses them in a better way for fuel that helps to metabolize them to a greater degree as fuel. So we say, okay, so right away we know it helps metabolize, especially carbohydrates, to a greater degree as fuel. Well, in uh, inositol, and I'll get to the clinical studies in just a second, inositol is also part of cell membranes. It helps make up cell membranes. And when I get to my next point, now it's going to start to make sense why this product is uh, so beneficial with helping regulate overall blood sugar in the body. Now, why is it so great at regulating overall blood sugar in the body? Well, one of the biggest reasons it is, is it actually helps insulin perform its job to a far greater degree. But it gets left out that one of the reasons why it helps insulin perform its job to a far greater degree is because it actually helps the actual cell membrane structure. So people are thinking about, oh, well, I can use this and it's great for my blood sugar. Okay, sure. But there's a lot of things that you can use that are great for your blood sugar. Cinnamon, um, gymnema, gymnema silvestri, 
Uh, what else is another one? Chromium, vinyl sulfate, banaba leaf. Like there's a lot that are great for your blood sugar. But inositol is very interesting because it can actually help with the cell membrane. And if the cell membranes improve, then it will allow insulin to actually unlock the door to the cell to then shuttle in the glucose to get it out of the bloodstream. And that is why it's one of the most effective nutrients at helping with PCOS. PCOS with blood sugar dysregulation. Remember, if blood sugar dysregulation is not the heart of your PCS, it doesn't help as much, but you should, again, still a great product to use, but not as much. That's why a lot of women will use inositol and it won't completely fix the problem. And the reason it won't is because it's doing one thing very specifically. But let me just give you two more benefits to inositol and then I'll get you back to the science. So Inositol also helps with mood. And you might say, well, how does it help with mood? Remember, if your blood sugar is not balanced, you're going to be highs and lows in energy, highs and lows in neurotransmitters, and there's a lot of depression, lower mood, anxiety, irritability that goes along with PCOS symptoms. So inositol can actually help with um, symptoms of depression and anxiety and low mood. And again, I have to give you the disclaimer. I'm not providing you medical advice. I'm not providing you medical treatment plans or any type of medical-based cures. Only your medical doctor has the wisdom to be able to do that. I am just sharing with you underlying root cause imbalances and how to heal your yourself once and for all. So what we look at is uh, the under the overall effects of this. And I want to share with you the actual studies on this. So because again, this is pretty remarkable. And again, when your doctor says, oh, uh, there's no such research, there's no clinical evidence that nutritional supplements work, you have to just take a deep breath and say, okay, I get it. I understand. So um, what you want to look at is this, that uh, let me share with you uh, a bunch of studies. So there are two different types of inositol, and they are myo-inositol, and then there's dechiro-inositol. And it used to be that people only used myo-inositol because a lot of the original research was based on a myo-inositol. And myo-inositol does help, just it does help with a couple things. So helping insulin improve and helping women get their cycle back naturally and improving overall ovary function. So that's pretty fantastic. But then later studies were done showing that myo-inositol and dechiro-inositol, two different forms of inositol, actually outperformed myo-inositol alone. So I definitely recommend when you're using a nutritional supplement that it contains both myo-inositol and dechiro-inositol. There's a little bit more to this. The dosage that you want to use seems to be 1,600 milligrams on the low end to 3,000 plus milligrams on the higher end. You can always start at 1,600 milligrams, but for many women, you're going to want to go 3,000 plus milligrams per day. You can do that morning and night, or you could do divided doses if you'd like. I like to definitely get it in in the morning uh, to make sure that blood sugar and insulin is helped for the full day. So that's that's absolutely how we use it in my practice. Um, and it's great to use it before breakfast if you can. Um, if it doesn't feel great in your stomach, you're always welcome to take it with breakfast. Okay. But again, there's more to this. So in additional studies, it showed that, okay, myo-inositol and dechiro-inositol worked fantastic. And they actually outperformed the drug given by doctors, which is called metformin for PCOS. So myo-inositol, dechiro-inositol, just inositol in general, we'll call it, outperformed the drug metformin for helping with insulin for with people, with women with PCOS. Why is this important? Because inositol doesn't seem to have any side effects for most women where metformin can. So this is pretty great. So if we're using something that nature gave us, vitamin B8 versus a drug, well, let's take what nature gave us all day long while looking at the underlying root causes, right? But it gets even better. Women, there's two different studies, two follow-ups, one at 400 micrograms a day of folate and another at 200 micrograms a day of folate. Both of them helped improve overall uh, PCOS-based symptoms. And so I thought that this was actually remarkable. It just goes to show you that in general, it's why we always recommend a daily activated multivitamin or the daily nutritional support powder with anything that you use. Here's why. The body does so much better when it gets all of its nutrients in conjunction instead of one silver bullet nutrient. Again, you can use these single things like a ubiquinol, advanced CoQ10, or um, whatever it might be, right? Single nutrients. And they can work. And I'm not saying that. But so much better when you use it on top of a fully 
methylated all in one, like a daily nutritional support or a daily activated multi, you use the one of your choice. I'm going to add the research here for you. I gave you the dosage of both. Again, I would, if it was me, uh, well, let's say if it was my wife, I'd be using the products that I spoke about. I'd be doing the test for the underlying root causes, and I would be using it in an inositol product. The one that we use, I can't link it up on today's show notes page because the FDA thinks that I'm trying to cure things, and I'm not curing anything. I'm not giving any medical advice. I'm using these air quotes very liberally, um, and that is because we work on the underlying root causes. But again, the science is there, but a lot of times they don't care even if the science is there, but I get it. I totally understand. We're not trying to play a medical doctor. And um, what we're trying to do is, of course, look at the underlying reasons anyway. So my recommendation, we use an inositol product. Let me see if I can find it for you. Um, yeah, it's very fancy marketing. It's called inositol support. And um, it contains both myo and d Cairo inositol. It's 1.6 grams combined two capsules you can use in the morning, two capsules with dinner. If you just want to do one serving, that's fine. Uh, I do recommend the two. And that's because they all this product also contains alpha lipoic acid at 100 milligrams. Um, if you've heard my show before on alpha lipoic acid, it is a very powerful um, nutrient and antioxidant that helps with blood sugar support, but it also helps with liver detoxification. It's been used in Europe now for over 30 years for type 2 diabetes. Again, not saying it's a medical cure or medical treatment plan, uh, but again, it is used overseas. So that is that. I wanted to bring all that to you. I wanted to really teach you about um, the underlying root causes of PCOS, how to rebalance it, through looking at the underlying root causes, but then also there's nothing wrong with using a product like inositol or inositol with the ALA, inositol support, while rebalancing the body. So in our practice, typically women will use inositol for somewhere between about four and six months. Uh, the research does show you want to use it for at least three months, but at the same time, working on the underlying root cause imbalances, detoxification, supporting hormones, decreasing stress, improving thyroid, all the things that we talked about, right? Rebalancing blood sugar, maybe using glucose support and the magnesium that we talked about before, right? The daily nutritional support, the inositol, none of these uh, are going to be harmful and all of them are going to be beneficial for your body. Remember, at the end of the day, everything can be solved. You want to look at what are your toxicities and remove them. You want to look at what are your deficiencies and bring them up. When you give the body what it needs, it knows how to heal itself. Hopefully today's podcast was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. I really do. And always feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could share, it could support. Thanks everyone. Take care. Have an amazing day. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.